Hi, we are in front of the Institute of Cell Biology in Munster University in Germany. I'm Erez Raz. And I'm Michal Reichmann Free, the scientist in Erez Lab. Today we'll show you around the lab and tell you about the main findings of our paper. In our lab, we study the process of cell migration. We use the germ cells of zebrafish as a model, benefiting from the optical clarity and the external development of the embryos. Germ cells are born away from the gonad. The gonad is where they give rise to eggs in females and sperm in males. Therefore, these cells have to migrate from where they are born to where they differentiate. The work presented in this paper relies on our ability to image migrating germ cells in the context of the developing embryo. We can visualize these cells at a high spatial and temporal resolution, allowing us to follow the dynamic changes in the cellular structures and in cell shape. The blue cells are germ cells migrating in a developing zebrafish embryo. There are two things to notice. One, the cells actively move relative to the surrounding tissue marked in red. And two, the cells follow a certain route. The fact that cells follow a certain route means that they respond to directional cues in the environment, as seen in the embryo on the left, in which the germ cells cluster at a specific region. In previous work, we found that these cues are provided by the chemokine SDF1, such that in embryos lacking this guidance cue, like in the movie on the right, the germ cells are motile, but do not cluster and move randomly in a non-directional manner. The two movies clearly show the difference between direct migration and general motility. In this work, we are mainly interested in the mechanisms allowing germ cells to generate protrusions and the mechanisms biasing the direction of these protrusions in response to the chemokine STF1. We know that many cell types extend protrusions in the direction of movement. In these cells, it's often the ongoing polymerization of actin at the cell front that essentially pushes the cell membrane forward. Together with generation of traction and retraction of the back of the cell, this leads to net movement. We wanted to know whether this scenario also applies for germ cells and therefore looked at the distribution of GFP-tagged actin in the migrating cells. Indeed, we saw elevated levels of actin at the cell front. But Looking carefully at the high temporal resolution, we realized that when a protrusion occurred, it was free of actin. This indicated to us that actin polymerization itself could not drive these protrusions. These protrusions that are not powered by actin polymerization are more rounded in shape and are referred to as blebs. Blebs have been described before primarily in the case of apoptotic cells in amoeba and in tumor cells in an in vitro setting. Formation of blebs in general involves local myosin contraction, which then leads to local separation of the actomyosin cortex from the plasma membrane. At that site, the cytoplasm streams and pushes the membrane forward, giving rise to a bleb. Since germ cell protrusions are devoid of actin and are rounded, we suspected that there were such blebs that depend on actomyosin contractions. We looked into this possibility and found that indeed, Inhibiting myosin contraction inhibited the formation of blebs, while activating contraction resulted in a strong blebbing activity. While myosin contraction is important for bleb formation, for directed migration it has to occur at the cell front, in the direction of migration. The question is then, what is the mechanism that allows a bleb to be generated at the cell front? Or in other words, what controls the spatial activation pattern of myosin contraction in the cell. It is known that one of the events occurring downstream to stimulation of chemokine receptors is elevation of calcium. We examined the distribution of calcium in germ cells and indeed calcium was found to be elevated as a cell front. The intriguing fact about calcium is that it can activate myosin light chain kinase, thereby increasing myosin contractility. Consistent with this model, 
we observed increased level of phosphorylated myosin light chain in the cell front. Furthermore, introducing calcium to the back of the cell resulted in bleb formation at this location. Understanding how blebs form is an important step in understanding the motility of cells that form this kind of protrusions. What we are trying to understand now is how blebbing activity is integrated with regulation of adhesion and generation of traction forces to allow forward movement of the cell.